you know, I was on a run the other day and I went by a house that was um like you could tell nobody had been in there for months mm -hmm. and it just got me thinking like uh isn't it crazy how fast like one decision you could make one little decision and your whole life could change yeah, so it fast. Yeah, just did it. Like moving. Moving. Yeah, for sure, but yeah, but it's also like you're you're bringing uh, you've been in your house for so long that like you're just moving to another house with the same people. You know what I mean? I mean like nothing is the same as as you know what I mean? Like nothing is the same as yesterday. Like what? I was just thinking about like <laughs> You know, like I knew nobody had been in this house for months or whatever. And I was like, imagine I just like busted a window and like just, uh, and get, just went in and like lived there. Like that was my house. And what happens when like a squatter, the cops come. Yeah. Or even like um, sometimes when I'm ordering uh, groceries and like the alcohol part comes, I'm like, man, if I just clicked on that bottle and ordered it to my place right now, like my, my whole life, like I have no idea. Do you feel tempted to ever? Never. Never. But I just I see it and I'm like, man, how crazy. Like I just think of how like. Basically, what I think is it's crazy how you don't like build up credits, right? So it's like, let's say, uh, you know, it's just crazy how I think, because I think of how clean my life has been for the last eight years. Mm -hmm. And I think like tomorrow it could all go away. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, committing a, a crime or drinking or doing drugs or this. And then it's like, it's just, it's so crazy how, like, what I feel like what I've built over the last eight years would take so much and so long to break. But the truth is it's like one little thing and it's like, it's all just so, fucking, yeah. you know, like you break into a house and, and then all of a sudden it's like, and you know, obviously there's a little bit more of like, we would probably get attention in like newspapers and mm -hmm. everyone knows about it and this, and it's like, you know, Sopranos actor breaks into home and, and it's just like your whole life is upside down. I think that's a great, I think being a person of color, they think about that probably a lot more often. Just because imagine all everything you just said, but then now also like there's a prejudice and a sort of like racial connotation that's mm -hmm. happening when you go out into the world, you know? Like if if you go into a liquor store and you get a hoodie and you're a person of color versus uh, somebody like you wa walking in, you'll probably get eyeballed from that one person, you know, and then like that could set off a chain reaction of events where maybe that Korean liquor store owner like pulls out a shotgun because you know, think so maybe you look like a guy. I, I mean, there's all kinds of crazy things that in an instant can change your life. Either you can die or be put behind bars. Yeah. And I think when you're of color, I think all that stuff is like heightened. Well, didn't you know? Jamie do that? What did you do? Uh, well, ago. I just did like a Q&A for this um, film that's up for like in consideration for the long form short film, right? I don't know the name of the thing, but yeah, yeah it's in consideration for a bunch of different short yeah. film awards. Yeah. It's called Two Distant Strangers. I don't know how if we're allowed to talk about it. Cause oh, it's sure. Out. It's a it's a really, really powerful piece um, about this young black man who wakes up um, seemingly had like his first night at this girl's house. Who's very, you know, has her life together, a beautiful apartment. He has to get home to his dog. Um, he steps outside, has a cigarette by accident, bumps into this white guy. I don't want to give it too much away. Right. But it's kind of like the stories we're hearing where a cop comes over and just assumes that he's up to no good just because of the color of his skin. They get into an altercation where, you know, the, the lead guy is basically like defending himself as he should. He's done nothing wrong. And the cop gets agitated like you're not listening. And he's like, no, you're not listening. And next thing you know, it escalates into this huge brawl. And it was, you know, the first thing you see is the knee on the neck. Right. Or the, yeah. the and he and he dies. And then it basically is the nightmare of the same situation over and over again, but happening differently and him trying to escape it and figuring out how he can survive. And it is basically, you know, a explanation of the fear and the 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 things that people of color have to think about every day that maybe other people don't yeah. when they leave their home. And then, you know, like within it, in this nightmare is also opportunity and dreams of like what they could say in the conversations we could have. But, you know, really understanding that this is a really deep rooted um issue that's been for hundreds of years and it's 
unfortunately very deep rooted um, in our nation and in this country um, with systemic racism and kind of really understanding what that means. I had some, I had this woman on um, my mommy podcast talk to me about systemic racism and like in healthcare for, you know, young mothers and black women and why they there's so much more death in childbirth with black women and children because they don't receive similar health care or sometimes like when you're having to choose between, you know, a white mother or a black mother, it's, you know, they've make these choices. And then also in systemic racism is just like health the health industry in general, like in these low income places, the only thing that's available to them is processed foods and these, you know, these yeah. these types of foods that so it, it just trickles down. And the way she so beautifully explained it to us, it it, it was eye opening because, you know, as somebody from me who always felt like I'm I'm not racist, I I see color. I, it's the wrong thing to say you don't see color. Like I see color and uh, appreciate and celebrate color and differences but yeah. i because i don't want to believe that that is the world right. that i want to live in i was ignorant enough to believe that that wasn't the world we were living in and i think yeah. a lot of the black lives matter movement was to wake people up from that myself included wonderfully said yeah it's uh it's something that i think i've just started to barely understand mm -hmm. you know and I'm, you know, I, I don't know what I would, am I a person of color? I'm just like, uh, I'm not from this country and I'm yeah. brown. So there's like, I, I like to say that there's experiences I've had that I could relate to. But I think, you know, being um, a person of color specifically that grew up in, in the United States as a whole different, unique thing. And, and um, you know, it, it's 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 not uh it's not anything that i think um we aren't making progress in mm -hmm. we totally are it's just like slow goes and it's like it's so ingrained it's like how how do you make how how quickly can we make progress because it's 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 uh it's something that's been happening for you know a hundred years mm -hmm. or more i mean you could say 300 years but like you know, once once the civil rights movement happened, it was still in the 60s. It still seemed like to this day the, the deck is stacked against people of color. For sure. With redlining. And, and there's a lot of like things that I don't think about or I've just started to learn about. You know, I didn't even know about this health care thing. But yeah. um, then I was thinking about like, you know, there's a grocery store I like to go to, Erewhon. It's like, well, what neighborhoods are Erewhon's in? You know, and then that's got a lot of good food. Oh, yeah white neighborhoods well what about whole foods like oh yeah it's mostly white neighborhood i mean there's and where's the real estate you know more valuable oh yeah white white area so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh that sort of stuff that we just kind of assume that's just the way things are without really asking or questioning why those things are mm -hmm. over there i mm -hmm. think it's also uh, uh you know it's when you're when you're born and raised in New York City or like LA or these places that are like so mixed and and that's what you're used to. Sometimes you hear these stories of things that happen and you're like what yeah. like it's hard to even connect, yeah. you know, like going to to public school my whole life and and you know when when you grow up in New York City it's like poor people live next to rich people and rich mm -hmm. people live next to that and you're just all together and to hear i don't know it's just you sometimes you hear these fucking stories and you're like that's here yeah like you know you yeah. hear things that yeah. like i remember what we were in sixth sixth grade no maybe maybe seventh grade whatever it's, it's not very important seventh grade and i was with a bunch of friends in a chinese restaurant and it was uh, me, my friend Malik, who was a black kid, and then my friend Kupo, who was like a brown, I don't know what he was, but he just, he wasn't a, a white dude. And, you know, however many there were at the table, like he went to everyone, order your food, order your food, order your food. And when he went to, the weird thing was, when he went to Kupo, who was sitting next to Malik, he's like, what do you want? And Kupo was like, oh, just like water, like nothing. And as he was walking away, the guy, the waiter, like threw the end bomb back and we what? went like it because you know and obviously i'm a white dude so i don't see it as much as somebody like somebody who is 
color would obviously tell me like, oh, it goes on a lot more than you see, obviously. But like the way that this happened, we were like, what? Instantly just started like flipping tables. Go Like shit got real crazy real fast. And we were on lunch at school. So we knew like, oh shit, if you, if, if we get in trouble during lunch, it's a much bigger deal than if you get in trouble after school. So we were all like, yo, let's get the fuck out of here. There was another table of our friends. We all get up. We're like kicking every fucking table to the, and like all those little teacups are like smashing on the floor. And we're like, you fucking pieces of shit. Like throwing things in the back of the kitchen. It was, it was ugly, man. It got, it got crazy real quick. And uh, so we left and we went back to school and everybody started talking and we we're like, yo, after school, we're going there and we're going to just fight like all these fucking dudes or whatever. And it was a big place and there were a lot of guys in the back, like a lot. So we uh, like three o'clock comes, we all meet on the corner. We're walking down and now we're like, oh, shit, way too many people heard about this. Like mm -hmm. there was if I'm if I'm saying a number, I'd be making it up in my head. It was like 60 to 100 kids. Or like rolling to, and by the way, we get to the front of this place. I'll never forget. It was between, it was on Second Avenue between Seventy Second and Seventy Third Street, and we start like you know we all get there and we're like oh like ready to go, and then we realize like oh you could only walk into this place one at a time because the door only fit like one person. So we think like we're all running in, and then all of a sudden it was like somebody had to go open the door, and you're like single filing into this place but as soon as we got in there was like a special board outside and the first person just like brought that inside like threw it yeah and it was just a fucking it was crazy like it was one of the craziest things i've ever seen uh to this day <sighs> still and we were just so we're fighting and there happened to be uh a black dude who was by the door who was eating with somebody and he was like a bigger than a he was like a football player but even he this guy was a monster and he started grabbing us two at a time and was like walking like throwing us out the there was like two doors and he was like throwing us out the first door inside the restaurant yeah. while everyone's fighting and shit's going crazy so now cut to you know the whole thing probably lasts way under five minutes but however long you know three minutes so now we're all outside and there's 60 kids it's like yelling screaming and what happened was the way that it got kind of cooled down was there was a woman who owned it and she was like the sweetest, nicest woman. And she's like crying, please stop. Like everything's going crazy. People are like, there's like sodas there. People are throwing them through. It was fucking nuts. And we get outside and there's 60 kids or more. Everyone like, I could see it right now, like book bags and we're fucking yelling. And the woman is like, please like stop everything. And this girl, I won't say her name. Uh, I Oh my God, it was so nuts. So she like steps in front of the whole crowd and she's like, let's go like me and you to the lady but she didn't know the lady she was just one of the kids who like came because she heard what was going on and now they start fighting uh in front of the restaurant like they're going at it i don't know how shit isn't like spilling out from inside I, cops are being called and this girl takes a can of pepsi and she hits this woman in the head and a lump just like I'm talking about in a split second like the cartoons yeah a, a blue like it looked like a blue golf ball was on top of her head this and it it changed i've never seen a uh uh an energy change so fast from like 60 kids of like ah like screaming like fuck you guys and like things are going down and it went to like like everybody was like holy shit and this woman is like this poor woman is like crying and this girl's again like it's a crazy scene and the girl's fight, and the lump just fucking appeared and everybody was like and just started fucking backing up and walking away. And like everybody went to the park and we we're like drinking, smoking. And we we're like, that was fucking nuts. It was a real crazy. What a bunch of bad kids. I mean, yeah, it wasn't like we just did it for no reason. Like, yeah, you know, I just, you know, it wasn't, it probably wasn't uh, a good just, reason. Yeah, but, just crazy. Know. Just crazy. I, you know, it's funny hearing those kinds of stories there because growing up in Southern California, it's like, everything's pretty separated by city, you know? And it was kind of cool with this Night Stalker documentary on Netflix about the uh, Richard Ramirez serial killer that kind of was like preying on the on, on Southern California, Los Angeles specifically. But like towards, towards the end, um, spoiler, he gets caught. But, uh, you know, he's, he's, and all his crimes are kind of happening all over. There's like, um, you know, I think a, a a Chinese or even a Korean area that he was preying upon. There was um, mostly a lot of Hispanic neighborhoods, but like it was 
he finally got caught in one of these Hispanic communities where everyone's just kind of everyone's Hispanic and they're all kind of like out in the street and, and they finally catch him and they like, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's, it's a great ending. But, um, those, I, I, I went to a, a all white, I mean, it was a suburb. We had two black guys that went to school there pretty much. I mean, there might've been like three, but, uh, hearing stories where everyone's kind of intermixed is like, it, it sounds so much. I don't know. I, there's a part of it that I really like, but it also sounds like, stuff like that can happen at any moment where it can just like pop off and all of a sudden 60 kids, you know, are in a like giant fight. Mm -hmm. Everything here was very spread out, very like, you don't go down that street, you don't go. And I think that's part of. What is it about youth, like young kids, boys, I guess in particular, that like always want to fight it out. And then like, why does that leave you as you grow? Well, because what happens with like, with girls, right, is like the end instead of fighting is crying. And when you're a boy, what happens? They're like, why are you fucking crying? So if you can't cry, what are you going to do? You're going to fight. When you're yeah. young. Yeah, I mean, you you know, that's that's what you... But like, are you, are, is it because you've, you've, you've been told what to do for so long that you just like, is it... Like, what is it about like a young boy's life that like leads you guys to like want to solve things physically? I was never the person that tried to solve things, but I was always getting, you know, I was always trying to talk my way out of something, but mm -hmm. I also talked my way into getting right. beat up. I, I think it's it's part of that very primitive, uh, you know, the the one that wants to mate has to show dominance Alpha, or, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I always, you know, it's funny when I, I come across super macho guys, I like really like to observe macho people and I grew up with a ton of them so I get up you know they're like big sports guys and they're big drinkers and yeah. they're like you know we're talking about when people drink Ow. and they're very aggressive sorry <laughs> but they're you know they're these guys and um I am so far away removed from it that I just go like yeah you guys are those guys you know <laughs> I'm very much I'll 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 be the funny little skinny kid in the corner at this party and um, I'll attract what, I, what I'll attract. But if I try and pretend that I'm one of these big alpha guys, it's going to come across very inauthentic yeah. and it's just not. There was one time uh, at a friend's bachelor party weekend with a bunch of these alphas, right? Big sports guys. Everyone's like, you know, uh, tank tops. Everyone's got a good build. Um, and like you do, you go to strip clubs every night and everyone's really good looking and um i was you know i i'm the not alpha but i had to f kind of find a way to get attention at this strip club mm -hmm. right so there <laughs> yeah i don't want i don't really think i want to tell the story anymore i pretended i was gay the whole weekend i went the mm. opposite what do you mean i like you flat played out a character like where i was gay all weekend at the strip club and because I wanted all the all the guys, all the big macho guys were like scooping up the the good strippers for lap dances. So I wanted to see as an experiment what that would be like to kind of see if, how much like the only angle I had here was like, so I pretended the two, I think maybe three nights we were there that I was gay and I was just like being dragged along by a bunch of these alpha guys. I was the gay friend. And the amount of attention I got from these strippers was unreal. You felt safe. Have you been doing that bit for these 80 episodes? And I haven't stopped. <laughs> I haven't stopped till yeah. today. We love our Hello Tushy. As you guys know, it is the brand new modern bidet attachment that is here to level the playing field. It is stylish. It is eco-friendly, easy to install, affordable. You're just not just going to cleanse your butt with a fresh stream of fresh water, but it cleans itself before and after with their Smart Spray Automatic Self-Cleaning Nozzle. Okay, it just attaches to your existing toilet. It requires no electricity, no additional plumbing. You don't need to hire somebody to put this in. Cuts paper, uh, cuts toilet paper use by 80%. So the Hello Tishy bidet actually pays for itself in just a few short months. Mm -hmm. And, and because... no more clogging your plumbing with wet wipes that aren't flushable. 
That's right. Even though they say they are, cut it out. That's right. And sanitation is simple because they have the Schmutz Shield, which offers easy cleaning and the knobs are naturally antimicrobial. Go to hellotushy.com slash pajama to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners. Go to hellotushy.com slash pajama for 10% off. Hellotushy.com slash pajama. You know what is of the time and Uh not going anywhere Going anywhere, anywhere soon is uh, needing a mask. Braddock, fast for Braddock. That's right. And Braddock are tried and true. It's where you can find affordable, reusable, comfortable, breathable face masks produced right here in the USA. They are premium upcycle t shirt material and jersey to create super soft, eco friendly face covers that offer protection without being a nuisance to deal with. I have so many in all areas of my life, all places in my life. Look how cute they are. They go with any outfits, all these different fabrics, style, cool conversation starters. So now when you go to check out their website at braddockusa.com, you'll see they already have great prices as always, but for a limited time, they're offering an additional 20% off with promo code PJ Pants. Again, that's 20% off your entire order with promo code PJ Pants. At B R A D D O C K U S A dot com, Braddock USA dot com with promo code PJ Pants. Yes, and we see you guys. That's one of the ones I see in the uh, YouTube comments the most is people saying they've uh, They're digging redeemed the our code and they get Great. the Braddock mask. So we thank you guys for supporting the people that support the show. Mm-hmm. But you know, I only had like three Braddock masks and then I had like seven other masks and whenever the three braddock masks would be done i would want to do the laundry faster so i can get them yeah. back but now because they sent us another shipment i have 12 i haven't touched the other masks yeah and they're so they wash really well they're still really soft jamie how long i want to know how long before you walk out your front door usually before you get a text or a call or a like from home yeah uh, average 15 minutes and what's what's the I call? I very rarely leave home, but like, what time are you coming back again? Or Bo calling asking me a question, or someone being like, the "Baby's not napping. What do I do?" That kind of stuff. You never go through a period where you put your phone. You can't put your phone on silent because if there's an emergency, I imagine. No, I mean when I was filming, yeah. Every I night not- I do it. From like when I go to bed until I wake up, my phone's on silent. Sometimes I think about my like, phone's on silent when I go to bed too. But mm. when I'm away from my children, my phone is is in front of my face at all yeah. times. So if you were sleeping somewhere away from your kids, you have your phone on all night. Mm-hmm. But would you have it on just for Cutter's phone number, or have it on all the way? Have, have it, it on. on all the way. Wow, mm. that's nuts. Well, nobody's calling me in the middle of the night. I mean, you guys. You're single. You can get like calls in the middle of the night. I don't get calls in the middle of the night from anybody. I mean, shit still. You would think so, but we're in bed pretty early. We're responsible. Oh, I have a I have a great little thing for the pod. So I was um the place that we always talk about, Air One, where we like to food shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jamie got me. I don't go there a lot because it's too expensive. But Jamie for Christmas got me a gift certificate for there. So I went there, and uh, I went up to order my food. They have like this hot food counter. And the girl's like, uh, oh, what would you like? Uh, you know, can I help you? And I'm like, oh, what, what is uh, this over here? And she was like, are you from the show? And I was like, yeah. Uh, and I was like, how the hell did you recognize me with my mask on? Because I have like a hat and then the Braddock uh, mask. And she was like, oh, well, your voice from Pajama Pants. Oh, you told me this story. Yeah. I love that. And I was like, oh, shit, that was the first time ever somebody it in person. It was that show she was talking about. Dude. Yeah. Well, I don't know if she was talking about Sopranos or not, but she said, like, she knew my voice yeah. from uh, from Pajama Pants, and that's how she recognized me with a mask on. It's fun, huh? I was like, Please, wow. Please, let's get that Erewhon hookup. It I was is like, that's the see order. He can't just be show. happy. He can't just be happy for the best how show. Let's see if we get that discount. What's the yeah. best show? It's the best. <laughs> what is this? What did I say? <laughs> what? <laughs> what planet? What just happened? Uh, man. Um, UFO. Oh, I would like, yeah, I would like that. It's too expensive <laughs> at the Air One, generally, is what I was trying to say, and I would love a discount. There. Best best show. You're my number You're like one Ed. view. You're like uh, 90 Day Fiance Ed. Yeah. Uh, all right. Go look, ahead. here's an email. Your brain somewhere else. This, one, this one's uh, very uh, topical for, for this pod. It's from Mason. It says, listen, haha, I love you all, even Bryce. Rob reminds me of all the dudes in high school. I went to an all-boys Catholic school in Queens. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. 
Jamie and Gab are super gorgeous and hilarious, and I'm not even being facetious. Hey, Gabby. Both have a great sense of humor. Kasim is not gay. Thank you for telling us. I hate that this is a premise. We've got to put a stop to that. He's just funny as fuck. Huh, just a little sidebar. You, uh, I always thought the gay stuff was a joke, and then you texted me the other day that you were in the bath watching yeah. Bridgerton? No, dude. I watched Bridgerton after my bath. Of course, I'm sorry. The bath got him in the mood for the I Bridgerton. took a bubble bath. Yeah, I took a bubble bath, treated myself, because I had a hard hike that day, five-mile hike up the GD Mountains, and I wanted a little, uh, wanted a little hot water on my muscles. All right, sorry, go ahead. Okay, continue. Yeah, this is great. I watched the Fart Simpson Rob version a million times. Mm. It's so dope. Thank you, Fart Simpson, again for that. You're all a breath of fresh air, Mason. Thank you, Mason. And totally agree. This one says, what it do, baby? What's up, Jam Jams? Quick question. Would you ever consider making the podcast episodes longer? Make them Rogan length? I think I could listen to y'all talk every day. That's nice. I think you have to... Well, I mean, Jamie's got to leave in five minutes, so let's let's try and do. Yeah, what right we're now to with no kids in school, it's hard for me. But, uh, I yeah, I mean, I th- I always feel like I could talk to you guys forever, but I just feel like you have to like I I has Rogan's shows always been long, like since the beginning, or did he get longer when he got made a lot more money and didn't give a shit? From what I remember, they were always they were long. always really. Long. I think that was kind of always his thing he, he had the long long but you form. have to have a guest i think for a long three hour conversation yeah. yeah 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 he does um i i also have a question for Cassim in the big mood takeover episode you mentioned you love collecting vintage spider-man issues as a fellow collector i'm super curious what your prized issues are rob jamie you've inspired me to get a bidet yes hello tushy.com slash pajama Woo. gonna be getting that super sweet hello tushy bum bum yeah these emails are just so perfect and Jamie, what it do, baby? Oh, what it do? What it do? A little Paul Wall action. What does that mean? What it do, baby? Oh, James, come on. What is it? Somebody's She's like, a, what it do? Like that's, it's just like, what up? He's a oh, he's a mommy, that? right? Peace, Jam Jams, Jake. Uh, Spider Man. Spider Man issues. I have a lot of the early uh, Ditko Spider Man issues, and I have uh, Amazing Fantasy number fifteen, first appearance of Spider Man ever. So cool. If there was, go ahead and ask me more follow up questions about it if you seem interested. Well, here you go. I got one. If 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 you were to hit the lotto for a hundred million dollars tomorrow, do you have a list of things you know you're like, that's what I'd want to buy. I, I I have this on deck. Thank you so much for asking that question. Um, that's what I do. I'd like to think that uh, I the Spider Man issue was one that I always felt like I wanted and I got. Now would I get a a, a higher grade? issue of that yes are there some other comic books yes i don't think i would do comic books anymore you know what i would do with a hundred million dollars um i would collect uh houses at this point because according to uh, my financial situation i need to start making money and real estate's the best way to do it well here's newsflash when you have a hundred million dollars the concern of having to make money kind of goes away a little. Passive mm. income. I think I think I could spend a hundred million dollars pretty quick. Anyone can. Dude, I think not dude, a million dollars is I nothing never. anymore. What would, what you don't would think your, you could ever think, spend a hundred million? I know what million? his what he would do. I mean, if you said to me like Brewster's millions, like if you're like gun to my head, you have to fucking spend a hundred million, of course anyone can. But if you said to me like here, you here's a hundred million dollars for you, I'd be dead with with Seventy million dollars. Oh, at the rate that you're spending money now. No, 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 I'm saying if I did whatever I wanted to do, my life, I would. We talked about this. I think for me, it would have to be a billion or more, like before I could. I think you could spend fifty million on one yacht, like one. Yeah, you could, but I don't want a yacht. He wants a place in the city. He wants a place by the beach. That's it. I'm done. How much was Jeffrey Epstein's place? Uh, He doesn't want an island. No, no, no. In in the city, it was like. $80 Eighty million dollars. Yeah, but or I don't something. think he wants an eighty million. I don't want something crazy like that. I want like a two bedroom. We're talking like... about whatever you could buy, whatever you want. I'm. T- I know. I asked He's the question. You. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> just saying. But I, but I'm just saying you're you're thinking about it like you could never spend a hundred million dollars over your entire life. I think you totally could with a couple three purchases. No, but I I wouldn't because I wouldn't buy the things you want to buy. That's mm. what I'm trying to say. You're talking about. So I would never. Spend... You have two minutes left with me. Yeah. So decide how you want them. 
Holy shit. <laughs> okay. I this suggest you a... dance for us. <laughs> I was just going to fucking hit her with some shit. Yeah. I suggest you dance for us and pretend I'm the gay cast from the strip Rob club. Spend the money how he wants. Stop judging no, how he wants to he spend does. his money. This is, I just, you know, I just show okay. up. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got it, guys. What else? What else, guys? Jamie, I deal with this. Let's just say let's I'm gonna just, start driving. Yeah, no, that's let's what not I need. talk about anything interesting. Let's. Uh, what are you up to later? <laughs> I need. I need a hundred million dollars. I would get a driver to yeah, take so me you here get a driver. and that's to take right. me home that's because right. you talk, talked about that like being like a hundred grand, hundred fifty grand a year. You'd yeah. be out of a hundred million dollars within ten years. Okay, I love Cass always telling me about me. Jamie, what about you? Uh, I would put twenty million aside for charities. Oh come on! I would, I would, because I've always said if I ever had fuck you money, like I cannot wait to do help the way I always want to. Yeah, I would buy my family like a ten million dollar house. Then I would get a vacation house wherever Cutter wanted. Then I would give a um, two million to each of my kids. I would give a million to my parents. I would give a million to my brother. I'm sure Cutter would want to give a million to his mom and um, his family. Oh, do you guys want some of my money? You guys, you've known this guy for nine months, Jamie. I, 30 years. It's been a year and a half. 20. I, I deserve something. Jamie, I put in 23 years and I'm the same as, uh, you're like, oh, you guys want some scratch? Oh, I never looked at it like you were putting in time with me. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. See, I don't think of it that way. <laughs> I don't Jamie, think of it at all that way. You're not going to throw me oh, a couple of fazools? I want a private plane. All right. I'm still left off the I want list. The okay, yeah, you can go, come and live in any of those you'd places. You'd go through it a little faster. Yeah, that's all right. You can you'd come and live in any of those places. Well, Kasim, would I want to live in those places? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll answer the questions a for you. A $10 million dollar house? Uh, it's a dude, nice house. It's not even Joe Rogan level. I don't Once need we get our Joe Spotify deal. We only do an hour, not three. That's what happens. Oh, all right. You done? You got to go. Everyone say oh, goodbye yeah. to Jamie. Uh, yeah, so Jamie had to go. She has kids and stuff. So we're going to finish this out, me and Cass. You want to go to the email? Yeah, I would love to read some emails. Um, Gabby, do you want to, you want in on this? Or did, what, what did we decide? I think the people, I think the people would love to, are you camera ready? No, you're not, but come on anyways. <laughs> well, I'm always camera ready. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, right. Gab's a million back See, on the pod. That's what, that's what they call negging. When he says, like, yeah, oh, yeah, you're yeah. not camera ready. Yeah, this but I make be... funny a little bit. But then mm -hmm. I go, oh, I got a big crush on her for real. I got a big crush on Gabby. Oh, God. Okay, go ahead. Ugh, right away, man. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. You had such positive response Thanks. the first time. You know? I what have you been up to? Why don't you catch gosh. us up? I didn't see any You guys didn't want to hang out, so. What's new? What's new with you? Nothing. All right, let's go to some emails. I don't care what's going on with you. I laughed at a little booger came out. Okay. So you bring it all oh. out of me. You bring the best out of me, Gab. Look at this. Subject date for Cassim? Question mark. Mm -hmm. Once you go Gabby ahead, read that. Once you go ahead and read okay. it. Yeah, since you wrote it. Because everyone's gonna, <laughs> everyone's gonna think I wrote it. Date for Cassim from Jess. Hey PJ oh. crew, I recently came across a podcast through some YouTube recommendations and immediately started binge watching. Jamie's a complete delight. Rob is a gem of a human, and y'all have an amazing vibe that helps me get my mind off things, which is invaluable during these times. I have no doubt pajama pants will get bigger as time goes on, and I wish you all the best. Keep up the amazing work. Now, for the meat of this email. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. I just watched the episode where Kasim talked about breaking up with his girlfriend. Oh, boo -hoo. Remember those days when you used to talk about stuff like that? Blue, who cash is broken up with his girlfriend. Now he's single and great. I know what happened a while. I know that happened a while ago, especially by the time you read this. But I've had a crush on Cassim since the California on days. So I thought, why not reach out and see where it goes? Of course. I'm a 25-year-old video game designer from the East Coast. I love dogs, art, going out in nature, and getting spooked. I have a slightly aggressive New York tone like Rob, and I'm usually one, <laughs> one of the guys like Jamie. What? She makes video games and talks like Rob? Wow. She's a guy who looks like a perfect. mix between, I look like Cindy Crawford without the mole. <laughs> I always do my best to support people in their creative endeavors as I have some of my own, and I 
greatly oh. enjoy giving and receiving critiques to improve. At oh, least, I didn't think she was going to say critiques. Me either. <laughs> it's going to be blows. At least three people, maybe more, have told me I'm funny and have enough sass to hold my own. Well, hopefully not too much sass. Three people? How old is she? She's fucking... That's <laughs> hey, three qu- people. Quit negging my girlfriend, dude. So Cassim. Oh, he's in. So Cassim, oh, your looks the at the camera, sense of humor, well-defined arms. All right. Whoa. And distinguished... hey, whoa, wait a sec. We got a little swank skank on that. And distinguished facial features always got me. Mm-hmm. If you ever want to hang out, play a game, watch a movie, listen to a podcast about cryptids, or discuss how there's no fucking way it was just a crashed weather balloon, I'm your girl. And maybe if things go well, you'll get to see that techniques aren't the only things I like given. Jess. Whoa. How do you feel? Sounds perfect on paper. And there's a photo. Let's see. Boom. Close up on and camera two. Zoom. <laughs> She's also a pretty girl. She is. You would think reading all this, I would turn over and look at you? like a beast. Yeah. Are there a reflection? <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Oh, why just, is that the assumption? Well, I don't know. I've just never come across somebody who's into all those things. Well, what a wonderful email. And can we get to the. Yeah. Arms, the part where she said I had well-defined yeah. arms and See, here you are, you made a face. All he hears is the negative. You can fucking throw this guy a billion compliments <laughs> and you say one one little, you make one little smirk and that's all he sees and hears. I, know. I will have my you know, God. I got yeah. a couple photos on my phone right okay. now that will blow you out of the water. Let's just see him. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, Gab, fuck right, yeah. I'll put him in the video. Everyone ready? Ready, set. That's consent. That's what we call consent. Yeah, here's in the biz. here's a photo that Kasim won't show us. <laughs> You're just giving uh, yourself more work. It's fine. It's tough, guys. Your arms are great. Happy? No, because that's not really you. Was that me, Rob? Sure. Go yeah. ahead. Read the next one. Gabby, it's so great to have Gabby on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. so welcome back. Welcome she back. She brings that, that energy, you know? Great. Cool. Yeah, cool. Four podcasters, four questions from Kevin. Hi, PJ Podcast, <sighs> a.k.a. Gabby plus three. Hey. <laughs> I really enjoy listening to your podcast and have one question for each of you, if you don't mind. Gabby. Why does it start... <laughs> Man, this guy is angry at Gabby, women. Gabby, with ahead. how loving and supportive a reaction you've gotten with your appearances, have you considered being on more or having your own podcast? This was my fault. I brought her on today. and <laughs> I should have never. No to having my own podcast. It's a lot. I, I can't sit here forever and talk. I'm not much of a talker, but. Neither can Jamie. She left. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Jamie's boat. And have you considered being on more? I'm on right now. So hi. You're, yeah. You you can stand TikTok, but you can't stand podcasts. I guess Bina. so. She's not a long long form gal. No, <laughs> uh, I only have fifteen seconds. <laughs> yeah, but Kaz, do you think there's a reason why you're so nice to Jamie and then you're so mean to Gabby? Yes, yeah. I'd yeah. like to hear it because Gabby, we have this playful energy, and she gives it back, and I like that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes with Jamie, I'm she kind of fr- just sits there quiet. Sometimes with Jamie, I feel like I'm, I might hurt her feelings. With Gabby, I don't worry about it. I don't care. He doesn't I, care about my. If feelings. you go home and you cry, I don't. I literally don't care. The wow. only time Kasim has spent with Gabby is right here, <laughs> and he stable. thinks he knows her enough to know no matter what I say, it, it doesn't, doesn't bother her. No, no, no. I don't. I don't know if it bothers her or not. Care. The point is, I don't care. He doesn't care, guys. Oh, that's sweet. If she what cries, what was her name? Jess. Jess. So why do you care? Doesn't yeah, matter. ladies, that's askpajamapants <laughs> at gmail.com. Thanks, Jess. So wait, why why do you care about Jamie's feelings but not Gabby's? Yeah, tell the people. It's not that I don't care about Jamie's feelings. I just feel like Gabby has this wall right here, and then anything My I body. throw just comes, it just bounces right off, you know? Whereas Jamie's a more empathetic person, so if I say something, it's going to land and it may, you know, may may accidentally hurt her feelings. Like I can say, I really don't care. I don't care about you. I don't mm-hmm. care what you do when you go home and what you think about me. Mm-hmm. And then this is what I get: a stone cold reaction, a, a laugh. Even is him saying that you're not an empathetic person the meanest thing he said yeah. to you? Probably, it probably, to right? Yeah, I, I sense so. that. Do you I consider so. yourself empathetic? Yeah, very much so. So. Look, gonna, why don't you I'm make gonna, eye contact with me ever? You know what yeah, it is? exactly. That's what I'm saying. You know what the difference is? I notice micro expressions. Mm-hmm. Kasim does not. Mm-hmm. So I would I notice saw. her expressions if she looked at me. 
Let's do a staring contest right now. This makes for great. What does that mean? Don't, <laughs> what does that mean? Don't blink. <laughs> Nothing. Hey, this is a TikTok, babe. <laughs> yeah, people are gonna be like, "Oh my god, did you hear the did you latest hear that pajama staring pants?" <laughs> Katsum and fucking Gabby had. Dude, you can hear long... where she lost it. You can hear it. <laughs> Katsum and Gabby had an eight-minute-long staring contest while Rob fucking shot himself uh... in the temple. God damn it! Gabby. Okay, let's keep going. No, this is fun. We're having fun. Jamie, very excited to see you acting again with this new pilot. Do you ever get tired of people only asking about your old gigs on Sopranos and Entourage? P.S. I find you adorable, and it's only partly of your fantastic commitment for supporting MS Research and Health. You're gonna answer this as Jamie. Jamie. I was just, I, you know, I was gonna do that anyway. What, what's the name? Kevin. Kevin, as Jamie Lynn, I'm very sick of people asking me about <laughs> Sopranos because I have so much more to offer. Mm. There's so much more mm. I could. Come into your podcast for 27 minutes. Things like that, which it's like, how come people don't mention that? You know, mm-hmm. that's that's my real strength. But um, really, I'm a mom and a mm-hmm. fucking badass wife. I may not fuck, but man, I cook, I clean. You should see, I do, as people come over to my house for eight hours, I'm doing the dishes for five of them. Five of those hours. Not five people, five hours. Because that's just how I fucking roll. Jamie, you yeah. sound a little frustrated sometimes with your current life. Is that true? Uh, no, I mean, I have, you know, some kid from Jordan who sexually harasses me at work every time I try and just come and- Jordan, wow. Be nice. What an exotic, exotic country. Exotic. Real good looking people you, you they turn out. He looks just like, you know. <clears throat> What's that? <laughs> you know, I'm uh. Jamie Lynn. I'm too nice to say uh, what too, I want to say. You're too nice. Yeah, you yes. are one of the nicest people I know, Jamie. That's me. So yeah, what else was it? What, what am I, You're hot? Yeah, listen, I'm fucking Jamie Lynn. <laughs> I know I'm hot. Look at me. I'm a fucking piece of ass. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm Jamie Lynn. It's, it's super confident of you to just uh, say, call yourself a piece of ass like that. <laughs> you know what? I don't even want... Don't call me Jamie Lynn anymore. JLS. JLS. Wow. Yeah. Jamie Lynn Siggs. I'm fucking... Jamie Lynn Siggs. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool of you. I'm the fucking hottest bitch in the game. Whoa. Damn. Yeah. JLS. I got a new fucking pilot. I'm moving to Austin. <laughs> I'm just fucking... <laughs> you're, you're on fire. I'm fucking huge. And guess what? Haven't had corona. At all. Everybody. Uh, uh, yeah. Fucking corona sneezing, coughing, not tissues, you. this. Not me. Mm-mm. And guess what? I'm around these fucking toddlers all day, young kids. Doesn't phase me at all. Gosh. Because I'm JLS. I'm liking this new yeah. Jamie Lynn JLS. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got some stank on my hanglow the other night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I've been watching Bridgerton and I've just been fucking. God damn. You know? I've been waiting for you to talk like this. Hey. You got you got JLS now. Jamie's dead. Kevin, you brought out you brought out something. Thanks, Jamie Kev. today. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Oh. oh hey guys. God. What just happened? <laughs> no idea. Rob, you just missed Jamie. J well, cool. she's going by JLS now, dude. I don't know if you've JLS, what does that stand for? I think it's her whole name. Jamie Lynn Siggs, I think, is what yeah. we're Man. She's moving to Austin. She called herself the hottest bitch in town. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tired of her family. Doesn't fuck. What's Gabby doing here? Gabby. Yeah, what are you? I'm reading this email. Oh, she's reading the email. Kasim, okay. mm. you've actually Cute. grown on me quite a bit. That's what I do. But for sure, my favorite bit of you is still with Norm. Since he said he is starting his own podcast back up again soon, have you considered him inviting him to Pajama Pants or perhaps being a guest on his show? I feel like your comedic chops have grown a lot since you've last interacted. Me and Norm, uh, we're, you know, I see him every weekend. That's you know, Norm McDonald for people who don't. I'll see. I'll, I'll ask him. You know, he's not really big on leaving the house. Mm. Uh, it doesn't drive, really, and um, he's really into sports, so we don't really connect in that way. Love Norm, a legend, a true icon. Would love to get him on the show. Make it happen. Aren't you the producer of this show? Yeah, I'm asking for help. Can I not ask for help? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. It would be great if we cut right there and Jamie's back there on the computer and she just looks out. <laughs> and she's like, yeah. All right, I got it. Yeah. You know? Rob. This may sound kind of corny, but I really appreciate how upfront and honest you've been with your past struggles. It's really inspiring to hear from a guy who has gone through the ups and downs with certain lifestyles, but can still come out as a person who seems down to earth and fun to be around. Much love and thank you for being an inspiration. Sorry if this email was a bit long. Gabby, if you at least see this email, I'd love to even be acknowledged by you. Ha ha. Hi, Kevin. Sincerely, a jammy, since I guess that's what we're called as of the last podcast. 
Hey, Kevin. Oh, wow. That was still Kevin. I thought we were on a new email. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. He appreciates honesty and being open, Cass. Hey, Gabby. Yeah, I hope you uh, at least acknowledge me. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Was that better? Yeah. It was a little better. Give him, give him, give him one more of your best hey, Kevin, into the camera. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> All right. Good? Now, let's say you, oh, you were going to a bar to meet a guy. Mm -hmm. You weren't sure how I wouldn't you... be at a bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you were going to the mailbox. Yes, and there was that's a, where I meet all the guys. Yeah, and the postman was there, and he was really handsome, and yeah. you had kind of always been watching him from the thing, so you mm -hmm. came down on purpose in your underwear. You see him, you see his little name tag. Yes. Hey, U.S. Postal Service, Kevin. And now you want to say, hey, Kevin, and he's he's your, he's your, the man in your dreams. I'll be, I'll be. be no, Kevin. no, no. She, oh, okay, all right. She's got to write to get for Kevin. Imagine you're camera. wearing your long sleep mm -hmm. shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Kevin. And that's, that's why she's it. single. Yeah. That is why I'm single. I did, I did get a sort that of is. like, uh, you're interested. Yeah. But you're just incapable of any conversation. Imagine yeah. you're wearing your long sleep, short sleeve t-shirt. My what? Say that's it again right. five times fast. That's right. That's right. <laughs> long sleeve, short sleeve. Long sleeve, short sleeve shirt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Good job. Oh yeah. We should sell those. <laughs> we should God. be selling a lot of stuff. Yeah. We should be selling stuff, making content. We should be doing it all. We have like the idea to do all that stuff. Yeah, it's the, the drive. Execution. Yeah, the drive. It's coming. It's we can coming. execute. It's more so the drive. Mm -hmm. It's coming, right? Okay. Where would you say um, you you produce other podcasts? Where would you say our podcast? How how we're doing compared to some of the other ones that you produce? You're doing good. You need to keep getting on more guests, more engagement. But see, like. We everyone hate doesn't like guests. I mean, they don't, they like the guests, but they like when it's just us three without you. Need you. the guests that <laughs> they like those episodes more. Wow, why do I come sit here? Because I we have this fun. Yeah, we have I a fun know. ping pong. I We're don't know why. It's banter. Racist. Yes. Yeah, you are for sure. You are as me from another country. It would be impossible for me to be racist. What was the question? Whoa. He's she's from Georgia, so. Georgia. She's from Georgia. Georgia Bodia. Georgia. Um, you know we love you. But Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You get that vibe, right? From Rob. Yeah. Dude, you're feeding. You're feeding what you're doing. <laughs> what yes. you're, what's gonna happen is that's gonna come to bite you in the ass. Is it? Yeah. No, you know what happened? It was <laughs> truth bomb. You just got fucking Yeah. <laughs> we only speak truths here on pajamas. You just got fucking truth. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Worried about that fucking truth <laughs> coming from over your shoulder. Jesus, that's that's the truth. That's what. As soon as you leave a room, that's what people say. They go, yeah. "Man, you're so sweet. What's with that guy? How come you hang out with him? Why do you there?" Yeah. And I go, "It's funny because when we talk to other people, it's like Kasim tries to make it seem like I'm the bad guy or like I'm, and I just let him because that's what good guys do." What you guys don't see is how evil Rob can be when these cameras come off and I'm telling you guys this is my one chance he's not who you think he is okay oh please on the next pod wear a yellow shirt if I'm really being <laughs> horrible to you yeah what do you think your first impressions are what are your first impressions that you give off to people me yeah uh yeah. I'd say perver perverse like uh po possible like predator uh -huh. sc scary ethnically ambiguous mm -hmm. um huge huge arms well-defined toned mm -hmm. body delusional uh just an expert love maker like yeah. expert of the craft yeah I put my ten thousand hours in mm -hmm. what about you all right yeah that sounds that sounds right i actually bought Casim's master class how to Did make you? how to make love <laughs> yeah yeah perfect it's great step one uh wait wait outside your victim's home by the mailbox. Could be. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kevin. That's where I'd get you. <laughs> now, you said you you said you said wouldn't be at a bar. Is that no. because you don't frequent, you Kasim, don't drink? Chasm translates in America to Kevin. Oh. oh. That, that email was from, was, what, that, was from? that from at comedyman.com? <laughs> you just da Vinci coded that, dude. Yeah. Nice national treasure. What was your question? Do you bar? Do I bar? I don't bar. Why? No. She sets I, the bar. You're bro. not a big drinker. No, I never have been. I how rather do you go loose? dance. I rather go dance at a, like a club or something. You see how big her eyes got when she talked about dance. So you go, you go to clubs. 
I have been to, I don't frequent them, but yes. And I, you I haven't prefer, been since? No, I haven't. Since so I haven't gone out dollies? anywhere in LA. Where do you even find a Cambodian nightclub? Yeah, what do you guys do there? <laughs> Is there an elephant with like sequins that you ride? Yeah. How many what arms? What else do we do there? How many arms does he have? <laughs> yeah. yeah what else? Are we in what? the right ballpark with yeah. the. <laughs> That's what it's like. Yeah. Belly dancing, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Is, Are there, you, like... Is everyone blue and like. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have little tambourines on their fingers? Yeah. And they, they clap those little mini drum, uh, mini symbols, <laughs> finger symbols. By the way, most underrated instrument, finger <laughs> symbols. Oh, oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it really takes a you know you know what they say, uh, short time to learn, lifetime to master. Absolutely, <laughs> just learn learn how in five minutes. Spend the rest of your life getting good at it. Yeah. Cause you gotta walk and you know nobody wants to see you sit still with the finger symbols. It's hard. Yeah, so belly dance, maybe yeah. a little snake. You're yeah. just wrapped what, what up. What else? What else is that? In a sarong. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. God, God bless. You should come join. It's fun. Huh? I imagine in the club it's very humid. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. kind of swampy. Like yeah. a mosquito's a bartender. Yeah. Yeah, just <laughs> a big, just a big komodo dragon is the bouncer. Yeah, it sounds fun. That's it's fun. You should come. Yeah. I'm down. Next How time. many eyes did the DJ have? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a part of this. Oh, that's great, dude. <laughs> Everyone's got distended bellies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You don't need to see a menu because there's only two things <laughs> no. that you could get in the whole place. We love Cambodia. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Love it. What's a national dish? <laughs> I'm not sure. Haven't you tried it? What is it? You tell me. Something with rice. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I think it's rice. It's rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's something with rice. It's a bowl with rice. <laughs> a spoon. <laughs> they just put it on the table. <laughs> we have rice with spoon. <laughs> oh, have you tried this rice with spoon? Gosh, dude. This is it. We're canceled. Like, no, I ordered I think, rice. Yeah. I ordered rice with fork. <laughs> it's been fun. How many episodes did we get up to before we got shut down? This is what happened. Dude. Jamie leaves, and it's just fucking. She really. She's the glue, man. Do we always want to be this bad, and then she just rain, <laughs> rains us in? Yeah. Oh. And you bring it I out. No, I bring it out of you. Sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, bad girl. I ap- <laughs> You ain't bad, girl. Kevin. I don't like that. Oh, you see uh-huh. what he's doing to your girl, Kev. You don't like, you don't like that voice. No. You don't like this no. voice. You're bad. Is that girl. how you talk to girls? That's why I keep it's the up. headphones off. Yeah, I should take these off. No, that, that's gonna what be... I message girls. I go, you're bad. You're a bad girl. How do you how do you message a girl, Cass? Yes. What's Maybe the open? I wait for them to I wait what's... for them to message me. Okay, they say, hey, what's your opener? I go, hey. <laughs> I go, hey. Okay, after that. What What are you gonna say? Interact with me. Yeah. No, she's not going to because that's that's. Oh, so you say hey to me, yeah. and then I say hey back, and you're done. Yeah. Okay. okay that's the end of that interaction. Guess again. what? I got a million more in my inbox. Oh, a million more. One thousand. Okay. One thousand ladies ready, lined up, ready to go. See, he told me he starts talking about dinosaurs. Yeah. Is that what it is? Do you like reptiles, dinosaurs? <laughs> What's your favorite dinosaur? Let's do, let's 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 perfect. Let's do okay. Boop, 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 boop. Texting. Yeah, texting. Here you go. And is this the girl who reaches out first, or he you does? have to reach out first? Because clearly you would. Oh, clearly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, Cass. Cool picture. I don't believe you. Well, I don't, tell I'm me. Not, he, wait, 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 can you tell me you. what's on your profile? Or like, whatever's on my profile. Was... You follow me on Instagram. You know what's on there. Okay. And I follow you. Okay. Hey, Gabby. Hey, Cass. Hey. Thanks for the message. Uh, thanks. Um, I see that you really like aliens. Absolutely love aliens. Do you believe? Yeah, I do. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you ever seen anything strange? Nope. So why do you believe? Because well, clearly I... you didn't look at my profile. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard you talking about it and you sounded really convincing and I think we should meet up and talk about it in person. That's very aggressive and quick. <laughs> That's a, Is it? It's a red flag to me. Actually, this is a question. How fast is too fast to want to go see someone in person? Because I feel like I get varying opinions on this. I think it. I think it's a, you have to feel it out in conversation. I think if you, it's different with different people. And then if it was me and you, and that interaction just happened, <laughs> never. It would. It wouldn't. It would be a long time. 
Okay. And you'd probably have Fair. to send me some some sort of like here's my body picture. Oh. Whoa. You request a body picture before you see girls. No, 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 no. You no, just only if they, did. Only if they send. Only if they send. Okay, mm. so there's no like requirement before you go see a girl. You just have to feel it out. Um, well, it depends. Are, has, you, are you drinking? I am constantly <laughs> looking for red flags. Constantly. Is that a good thing? And so, doing? no, no, no. It's just all in your. It's all in your behavior. So if for some reason I get a vibe like. Like I, I sense that you probably are, um, you're, you're, you're maybe in it for like, oh, you, you think it's cool to date somebody with a lot of Instagram followers, or maybe you aren't, um, maybe you, you're just, a, you're just dumb. Maybe you're a stupid person. You know, if you misspell a lot of words, I'm not going to be into it. I love okay. that. You I love miss misspelled oh, words. No what does that, in, what does that say Why? to you? Does that go? Oh, this girl's oh, let's dumb. Meet up, it? Let's meet up now. Yeah, and N O A. Yeah. -E -A -T. yeah. -E -A -T <laughs> uh, no, that's good. Are you? Uh, have you ever slid into a person's inbox on Instagram to get somebody's attention? No, they would be anim animated characters. They, those people don't have. You know, she. That's what she watches. All she's like. But oh, I watching love an animated characters. Yeah, on Netflix. You're. I'm like, what are you watching on Netflix? You're like a baking show and cartoon. Fucking. You know, whatever it is. There's a man out there. Say that. That's what you watch. You no, but have you ever slid? And I do a DM. No, that that feels uncomfortable. What's the closest thing you've done to sliding into a guy's DM? Uh, what would the other equivalents be? Like moving to LA and editing a guy's podcast for him. Oh right. Just because you wanted yeah. to hang I did out a do little. That. I did do that. Do That's you ever want to do that and you just feel like it's uncomfortable for you? What? Or? Sliding into a DM? Yeah. Yeah, DM. D <laughs> yeah, the D Dungeon Master. Yeah. No, I don't I don't think so. It feels weird to like just do that. I think I totally can understand why it would feel weird. I think there's a way to do it that's not weird. As somebody who's had people slide in, mm-hmm. Um, and as somebody who's slid in, I think there's a, a way to do it that doesn't, you know. Oh, you don't think it would be, hey, Cass, nice picture. <laughs> that wouldn't. Hey, I like picture. I <laughs> like you picture. Hey, I edit podcast. I don't normally do this. I like <laughs> picture. This is how I talk to guys. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, That's so why I'm weird. single. Have you, have, you, have you ever been like leaving your place in the fucking t-shirt and mm -hmm. underwear thing and some guy saw you and was like, hey. No, it's only families in my neighborhood, so. <laughs> There's no dads uh, no. that I see. Uh, see, the, Asi the Asians do it right. <laughs> well, of, what do we do right? It's just, in my neighborhood, it's just a lot of riffraff. Riffraff. A lot of single Literally the trash. riffraff, the rapper. You don't like the your... single riffraff in your neighborhood? I'm a family man. Are you? Everyone yeah. knows that Are about you? my buddy Rob. <laughs> Yeah. This guy's trying to build a unit, a family unit here. Family man, Rob. That's Nuclear what family. Yeah. What are you doing uh -huh. to build your family unit, Rob? <laughs> well, the he's getting himself, is... I'll tell you what, he's getting himself right first. Are you? That's what you got to do. Kasim told me, he said, hey, when you're baking a cake, you got to make sure that cake is done. He said, you got to stick a toothpick in the middle, and when it comes out, nothing on it. When you stick a toothpick in me, there's still there's blood. Just... You like baking shows, right? <laughs> Before you decorate a cake and you put shit all over it, you got to bake the cake Right. Yeah, and I take longer to bake. To bake? Okay. His takes Fair. a little longer, but guess what? Fair. He's so much sweeter that his cake is gonna be. So yeah, and sweet. moist. Jamie Lynn, on the other hand, was married very young because she's perfect. You know, she her. She is. She, somebody put her in the oven. They opened it. They were like, "How the fuck? Bing, done. Mm -hmm. How did that happen?" Yeah, she we came out of an easy bake oven. Yeah. Did you ever have one of those? Absolutely. Or do you just naturally cook your food with a light bulb? Yep, that yep. too. Mm -hmm. If Rob was a girl, would you date him? <laughs> Cool. I'd have to see what his measurements were. <laughs> the ones that his you face, like. I know, his face does it for me. Yeah? yeah. Yeah, I think I think if I think I have a better chance of dating him as me <laughs> than if I was a woman. I hey. think being a woman would hold me back. I think we are already dating. It's just to say we do it in a in You our heard own it here way. first, folks. You no, got it. You cracked the you case. Didn't, you didn't hear it here folk, uh, first. You heard it 35 <laughs> episodes ago cuz Casm's yeah. trying to push this fucking narrative all day. Yeah. It's a new year, new cast. I'm open, dude. So you've never seen a, a guy and been wished you had the balls to slide into his DM? Of course you have. To like slide into, no. I mean, I think the initial thought is, oh, he's cute. And that's kind of And then it. you just let it die right there yeah. on the operating table. You don't Why? even give yourself a chance. A chance for what? I don't think every uh, guy who's dating is cute, I'm gonna like date them. 
Why? Do you? Every girl you think is cute, you're like, I should go date yeah. her. <laughs> I see, I okay. see potential Mrs. Different. Fawaz Gariba in every... No, you don't. And every girl you see? In, in the ones I like, <laughs> yes. Okay. Well... Yeah. I see, you know, I see what I see, I see success. I don't I don't talk myself out of it. I see a winner when I look in the mirror. So you go for every <laughs> you you approach every girl you think is no. cute. No. Okay. No, because in no, that No, no, we're not saying a, approach, but there's a difference between wanting to approach somebody and just thinking like, "Oh, I would date them if the opportunity presented itself." Mm -hmm. Like I don't I don't I don't go, man, that girl's cute. I would never date her. But like just seeing a girl, of course not. If you think a girl's really cute, it's like, oh, hey, I wonder. There are some girls I see that are too so outrageously good looking. They're so out of my league that I go, wow, that's a really beautiful person. And I bet it would be great to engage with them in a physical or emotional way. But it'll never happen. So I will never. But why never... do you say it's not going to happen? Just you some, don't know. Just some people you know. Just some what do you people mean? you know. You know in some... terms of looks specifically, I guess, right? I am a person. I'm a guy who needs time with a woman, to mm. much like the viewers and listeners of this podcast to grow on. Right? I'm not one of these people that you look at right away and go, "Oh, I've got to shuck that dick." You know, it's I need the time where they go, "Wow, that guy's, that guy's personality, all this, all this, all like uh, the treading he does around homosexuality, all that stuff. I, I love it. I gotta get to know that guy. I need time. You know, mm -hmm. and so you just don't get that when you see a, a ten is is looking at, you know, they're looking at all these offers in their inbox and they're just. When I was younger, I thought I wanted to be with a girl who was a 10 and now that I'm older, you realize you don't. No, you want like Never. a because it's just seven, eight. Because I don't have the work an, uh, eight and a half. ethic to like try, tr always try and be like, I just need to like know. Why, because you think she would be distracted by other men? Listen, when it comes to girls who are like 10s, in my experience, their looks are so it's like they can't they can't go get a coffee. You know what I mean? They can't without not only being hit on, but also offered things just based on their looks. Like Oh, I see. Okay. Ja, this, you know, be a mile. That and just to be somebody where like it's such a a thing. It just becomes like, you know, I've dated girls who were very pretty where like Walking to the bathroom anywhere we went was a problem because it was just some fucking dude and and, mm. the, and it just becomes like you're like holy shit this is yeah exhausting you know and then there's a part of you that goes well I know she can handle herself like it's fine and then there's mm -hmm. times where you're like I can't just sit here like when I know you know it's like hey tap your head if you want me to come fucking save you or mm. what it's like they're and to uh, to for that to always be a thing. For the rest of my life, I'm just not the personality type who's like, I want to deal with it. I want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just too much where, you know, I'd want a girl who was your same. I'd like, level. dude, I've, whoa, I'm, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, you're a 10. Just kidding. Of course. My same <laughs> level. What, what? Oh, I missed this. You, said, you just said that you would never date a girl who's a 10. Let me help you. Yeah. Out Go ahead. Now Meaning look I would never date a girl on my same level. Uh, then you said what? I don't know what I said. You said Interesting. you'd want to go no, on your weird. level. What's my level? Yeah, what Gab? exactly is Rob's I level, the, Gabby? I made the assumption that if you're dating a girl who's a 10, that she's a ten. And uh, that doesn't higher, really add up. Higher. Does that add up to you? And that I'm a... and then you're like nine point five. I don't know. She's saying I'm reaching for the ten. <laughs> uh, saying... You don't even want to be with the ten, so that has whatever. nothing to do with whatever. who I am. Whatever. I need to be Where'd you get the yeah. shovel? Because you have dug yourself into a giant hole. Now you got two enemies. You uh, got a friend and oh an enemy. No, we need to end this. You know what? You know what the problem is? This podcast will never end because usually you're sitting over there telling I us know. it's over. <laughs> well, I, I just know. said. I have no should... clue how much time we have left. <laughs> said we what should year end. is this? Fuck, man. Dude. Did there mm -hmm. uh, the Eric Andre show uh, new season has just come out and he like he's one of the funniest people. He's great. But um, there's an old skit where they're in a laundry mat, and it looks like, you know, like one of the laundry machines, like don't use it or whatever. So people are all around it doing their laundry, and all of a sudden he comes falling out of the the laundry machine, and he's covered in like slime <laughs> and like naked, and he's bald and everything, and he looks around, and he's all hunched over, and he goes, "What year is this?" <laughs> it's just, it's so fucking per like to think that. As like a fucking stoner or like a goofball, and then one day to be able to like execute yeah. it and just fucking put it out there, 
it's so great. Like you see something like that, not only does it make me laugh, but it fucking warms my heart. It's a great, it's great comedy where it doesn't hurt anyone, and it's just uh, you know just so short, brilliant. He's filled with lots of good stuff there. Would you slide into his DMs? Sure. I'll say, hey. Hey, nice picture. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We. Uh... Gabby, it's been so great having you back. Has it? Gabby, everyone, just a round of applause for uh, Gabby coming back on the show. Don't. Hey, Gabby, <laughs> later, don't insert applause there. We just want I'm a going nice... to. I'm going to. Uh, like, you know what's you know what's great is that she won't because it's like extra work. It is extra work. And so she's I probably like she's won't. gonna oh, I have to go in the audio clip folder and like search through applause and like oh like yeah. it's still what are you gonna 50. go home and do nothing? Yeah. Why are you spending to take a little more time? All joking aside, when we talk about doing extra work, I feel like Gabby actually does the extra work. Gabby she's, does Gabby does the most work. She's so Thanks, fucking guys. good at editing these shows. Like I've again we had people who edited before Gabby and then you see the difference of after Gabby and it's like man she. To get a little laugh, she will take that extra time, and do, she's. Do you? What do you thanks, say to that? Thanks. We. She doesn't have to say anything, Cass. No, I want to see appreci- it. On her. Well, we look appreciate at me. what you do for this podcast. Rob's the one saying it, so. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. See, he can't. Jeez. If. Wait, like, look at me. Yeah. Yeah, Cass. I love you, Gabby. Love you too. That's a lie. <laughs> All right, hit him with the plugs, babe. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, once again, I want to thank Gabby, a.k.a. Gabs a Million, for coming on the show today. Mm. You can find her on Instagram and uh, TikTok under... GabTab underscore. Cool name. Convenient. And you can find us on Instagram as well. We're on Twitter. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the subscribe button. Make sure you click that notification bell so you know when our videos go live, which is every Tuesday mornings. And uh, me and Jamie have Instagrams and Twitters, and you can follow us there. And we have a Pajama Pants subreddit, r slash Pajama Pants podcast. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, a lot of plugs. That's gonna. That's. I know it's a lot. We just we're such a huge podcast. We just gotta oh, make sure everyone gets paid. My friend has uh, Casim started this train, so we're fucking. Woo-hoo. Go ahead. My friend has uh, an ice cream that you could get on Amazon now. It's all vegan. It's amazing. Uh, the chocolate is the best for me. Then the toasted coconut butter. Oh yes, uh, it's called Sun Scoop. You can get it on Amazon. Yep, it's uh, a little expensive. I'll tell you right now, but <laughs> it is delicious and uh, all very high quality ingredients. And yeah, just... I've I've had the same ice cream. Uh, it is very good. I really like the toasted uh, toasted coconut, coconut butter. And I hate coconut, but the toasted coconut butter is like their version of peanut butter for people who have nut allergies. Yep. Very good. The Smooth. chocolate is real. And it's I great live. that it's on Amazon because I had to go get it at Erewhon at one time, and uh, <laughs> that was a trip. Yeah. That was a trip. Anything you want to plug? Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Aw, hey, Kev. <laughs> you and Gil do a... Uh... Gil Gab? Yeah, Gil you, you and the, the guy we really wish was here. You guys <laughs> do a brother. pod together? No, we don't do a pod, but we do silly videos. You guys do silly videos yep. together. Well, check check them out. Check them out. And we thank you guys, honestly, for uh, supporting the pod and, and supporting our sponsors, and we'll see you on the next one. Scabs aye, a million. Aye, aye. Yeah, I fall down a lot. They call me Scabs a million. <laughs> Keep the, hey, make sure you keep that. Make sure you keep that in, okay, Gav? And end it right now. <laughs>